Thank you so much for coming to our um, annual business meeting. Uh, we are also streaming this online. So once again, we have our virtual attendees um, right here with us. Uh, so the agenda for this meeting is, um, it's really about uh, NASIS, the organization, what we've been up to and what our future plans are, as well as um, some deeper dive into the organization with specific committees, um, our financial report, uh, et cetera, all things that we like to um, be transparent about and share with our membership. Uh, so we're going to do a brief year in review, um, and mostly I would like the year in review to come from our committees themselves, so we'll do a few committee reports, um, and I'd like to introduce the board um, and our incoming board, and uh, we'll talk about the year ahead, and then as we typically do during this meeting, it will be open mic where um, anybody who has an announcement or would like to ask a question or say anything is welcome to come up here and do so. And as much as we can, we will be moderating Slack. So for our virtual um, attendees, if you have specific questions, please post them in the board public channel. Okay. so. Just about one year ago today, we were kicking off. <laughs> it's weird, sorry. My, my brain's like kind of fried, but we were kicking off NASIS 2020. So uh, that was just a year ago. And we've, um, that was a big, big uh, effort for our organization. And just once again, I want to say thank you to everybody for coming, for volunteering, and for um, just making it really great, so thank you. So uh, we've had many firsts, as you've probably heard multiple times, our first virtual conference, fully virtual conference last year. Um, I think maybe it was the first time um, for our organization that we also did not meet in person for our spring board meeting um, when we had our uh, new board members joining. So it was a little bit of a very different year. We actually split it up over two weekends. Um, everybody was very patient staying on the phone for uh, four to five hours over two weekends. And at that time is when you know, we uh, reflected a lot on what had been accomplished in previous years um, and, and wanted to focus more on what committees wanted to do this year. And it's been um, a really great year with yet another unprecedented hybrid conference. Um, but even through all of that, there's still been a lot of things that have been accomplished. I just want to do a few highlights for some of the committees that will not be giving full um, reports. Uh, first, communications and outreach. Uh, that's the committee that's been coordinating all of the organizational related social media, communications, NASIS News, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, Slack. Uh, so it's a lot of work that that committee does. And uh, the outreach portion of this committee um, picked up some work that had uh, been started a couple years back and um, worked with a handful of volunteers from our community um, to add a couple of hundred contacts for HBCUs and other MSIs to our um, mailing list. So that's really, really awesome. Uh, for those of you who have seen um, the NASA store, uh, there's been a lot of new designs added over the past couple of weeks. The committee is definitely looking for um, designs to submit. So I think Travis also mentioned this yesterday and would just like to reiterate, um, bring your, submit your designs and if you haven't yet, take a look and um, if you like something, buy it because all of the proceeds are used towards travel grants, streaming and making our conference more accessible. And a reinvigorated co uh, committee this year has been uh, membership and analytics. 
and uh, we will be hearing more from them in the coming um, in the coming term. And yes, with this reinvigoration, they're really wanting to focus on uh, member member experience member experience and needs. So if you have ideas or if you're a member or if you're not a member, um, please submit feedback to them. And I think they will be doing some more formal outreach to the community um, this coming year. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Molly, who is the chair of the awards committee. Thanks, Mamatha. Um, just a quick pitch for the awards committee, if anybody's interested in joining and helping. Um, it's fun, because we get to give away your money. Um, all the money for the awards, the travel awards, all the awards that we're talking about is from your memberships and the, the NASIS shop, so um, get involved if you like. Um, so this year, the travel and participation grants were a little wonky because a uh, hybrid conference. So we awarded, um, money to each applicant. We helped 15 students and 10 general members attend the conference in person or virtually. Um, due to the hybrid format, we, we assisted everybody, but we didn't spend our allotted budget because the budget is usually to try to get people to come in person and support the in-person participation so that the, um, we had budget left over. Uh, so we're aiming to have more people join in person in 2022. That's the goal. Uh, also, with the travel and participation grants, the, the board had um, set an initiative to set 20% of the grant money uh, to dedicate that to um, trying to increase our diversity as a community. And so um, we met and exceeded uh, those goals by far, you can see the numbers. So that, that is an outreach that will continue. And uh, we encourage everybody to apply for travel grants if you need assistance, students and um, professional and general members. Uh, for the student awards, um, Cartographic Perspectives is NASIS's journal. Um, Everyone who's, every student who uh, has a peer-reviewed paper, who is a first author on a peer-reviewed paper is eligible for this award. Um, and we'll be announcing the award winners on uh, Friday at the banquet. I just wanna make sure everybody knows what awards are out there and that there's money associated with these awards. Um, the Undergrad Student Scholarship and Cartography, this is the second year we're awarding this. It's a pretty new initiative. It's for undergrad students in two or four year uh, programs studying cartography uh, and for the student map and poster competition hopefully everybody got a chance to see some of those maps in the gallery last night and everybody should get to go online and look at them more closely um, a couple of our uh, committee members set up um, the, uh, the new Zoom feature. People last year requested the ability to zoom in further on the maps, and so we did that, and you can really get in on all those maps and see a lot of details. So please visit that and vote. The voting will go through tonight at midnight. So vote on those, and the awards will be presented tomorrow night with, uh, with money. Um, the dynamic map competition, we had three entries this year. Please vote on those as well. Visit them online. Um, and we do have two categories for that. Uh, competition group and individual this year we only had individual entries so that's what we'll be um, voting on but just as a thought to any students out there next year that um, group category is ripe for uh, for entering uh, the map gallery is open to any member who wants to share a map and please do um, we had 61 maps this year and you can zoom in on those also online Swag is another part of what our committee does um, f for all the uh, books, uh, license, soft, software licenses, t-shirts, store credits, um, all of that that's given out at this conference. Uh, we help co coordinate that. And the last thing I wanna leave you with is a, a thought for entering next year. We have a special award that's given out every two years called the Corliss Benefideo Award, and you can read more about it on the awards page at nasus.org. Um, it's it's uh, meant to to honor 
people who are artists, cartographers, writers, scientists, anybody whose work, body of work, um, uh, inspires us. So uh, take a moment to visit the awards page and look at our previous winners and get thinking about who, who you would like to nominate for next year's presentation. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Leo Dillon, and uh, Mamata got the slide a little bit uh, wrong there. It's not the elections committee I'm the head of, it's the, uh, the nominations committee. I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. You guys, you guys are the elect, all of you guys here are part of the elections committee. So, and what the nominations, oh, excuse me, it'd be easier if I do this, wouldn't it? Uh, what the nomination committee does, its main job is to prepare the ballot for that, that given year and to work with the board on, on the voting procedures and how you go about doing that. Now, a couple of years ago, the board came up with a voting procedure that w in which, in the event of a large field of candidates for the uh, director at large position, which is the one we normally get the most people coming in for, there would be a pre-vote uh, to bring the number uh, within the board. The board would conduct a pre-vote to bring the, the number of candidates down to a level that might be more manageable for the people having to vote. Um, this procedure was announced at that meeting in Tacoma in 2019. And uh, even then, at that meeting, there were some people, some members who took issue with it and let us know about it. So this year was the first time that that procedure was enacted, and out of the 10 absolutely excellent candidates for the director at large that, that, that were nominated, uh, the board winnowed those down to seven. And in the meantime, during the spring board meeting, and before that, and after that, and for that matter, um, the, uh, the board discussed quite a bit uh, what was going on, with, or what, you know, what they thought about the voting procedures and how they should go forward, and the board directed the nominations committee to conduct a survey of the, all the board members to get their thoughts on the voting processes. So um, we did that and uh, we got them back and although there was a, a fair amount of variation in the opinions that were expressed by the board me uh, members, a majority of them were in favor of having all of the candidates appear on the ballot not, and not have the board winnow them down. So as such, the nominations committee, this one, has recommended to the board that all properly nominated candidates for director at large should appear on next year's ballot. And that's uh, what that'll, that'll be uh, uh, the direction to, uh, for, to address for the next nominations committee. First, I want to thank all of the nominations committee members who worked so hard this year, and that would be Daniel Huffman, uh, Vanessa Kanapke Wetzel, and Molly O'Halloran. Um, and I'd also especially like to thank everyone who ran, those who are going to be continuing on with us at the board and those who didn't, who are not. Uh, the field of candidates was absolutely exceptional. Uh, they were really fantastic, and we're hoping, though, on, on behalf of the entire committee, we we're really, really hoping that those, everyone who ran will consider running again, will also consider using their, their uh, considerable talents to, uh, to keep the work of the society going and to make it a better one. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm going to talk to you about the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Um, before diving into everything year in review, this is also the first year that this committee is officially a committee. Previously it was a subcommittee, so that's also just, well, we're starting the second year. <laughs> this past year was the first year. Um, yeah, and that's just really exciting, um, and it's been awesome to be a part of that. Um, and I also just want to highlight um, as Molly noted, if you're interested in joining the committee, like all the committees at um, the NASIS, in NASIS, you can join. So feel free to reach out to me or anyone else if, you're, if you wish to be involved in another committee, and you're welcome to join all our meetings and planning. Um, so this year, we continue to recruit speakers, um, and that included um, recruiting the keynote speaker, speakers. Um, we also created an anonymous survey to collect feedback. Um, I can share that in Slack again. Um, it is dash DEI slash DEI dash survey, um, nasus.org, um, but I'll share that in Slack. Um, would really love everyone's feedback. If you feel like there's anything that needs improvement in terms of accessibility or anything else, we love to hear from you and always do love hearing from you. As Leo noted, um, we do listen to what everyone has to say. Um, and we are currently working on updating the diversity and inclusion statement. 
um, to be a diversity, equity, and inclusion statement because we are, we believe it's really important to reflect um, equity as well and what we care about and the society at large and what we're working towards. Um, this year, we also um, shared our stance on LGBTQ+, um, and showed our support um, in a statement. And uh, you may have sh seen that link shared around, but I'll share it again. Um, in particular, there also are links shared for donating um, to local nonprofits um, in Oklahoma for um, helping provide um, services, education, educational services, um, support, uh, legal support, um, lots of support towards folks in um, those um, communities. And there's also a nonprofit for um, transgender and non-gender conforming folks um, participating in sports and that nonprofit helps to fund those. Um, in particular, Oklahoma has passed legislation that is anti-trans um, folks in sports. So if you have any amount that you're willing to donate, that'd be really great. And I'll also share that link in Slack. Um, again, um, we also uh, have the committee has done a lot of work in investigating um, training and workshop options for the NASIS board. Um, I and all of us definitely are not, of course, experts in all of this, and we just want to continue grow in that space. And um, we found some workshops that will really work for us. And um, start in this coming year, we'll be um, doing a workshop. And hopefully, that also will be reoccurring, because it'll help us just plan initiatives in the future and such um, that involve DI work. Um, also in the future, we're going, uh, the committee is going to help to tag NASA's YouTube videos, so it's a lot easier to search. Um, and that is going to help everyone in general, but also it's going to be part of an education, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> education uh, thing that we're doing that will just help everyone have access to the YouTube videos um, that we have put out every year quickly. And many folks, whether um, at work or education spaces, everywhere will be able to add that to their curriculum if they want. Um, and it'll just be formatted kind of in, in the way that you might see uh, like high school or college curriculum for a semester. So just having some topics where you can go to those YouTube videos and like learn something about those areas and also supplement it um, with links for learning as well. Um, that's especially to help um, people be able to learn outside of this conference um, and just have it be easily accessible in a way that makes sense and kind of connects. Um, and that will be known as a NASIS syllabus and people are welcome to hashtag that once it comes out. Um, that may take a while, but hopefully it'll happen by next year, next conference. Um, and then also working on coming up with funding possibilities to help um, bring more folks into the conference. Um, as always, we've already done this in the past, like we're helping provide scholarships for folks, but we want to continue to do that work. So the committee is just thinking about how we can fund um, more of that. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Hello everyone, and hello to everyone listening remotely. Um, my name is Mary Beth Cunha, I'm your treasurer currently, and um, I'm here today to give you a very, really brief, hopefully brief, annual report on the financial status of our really cool mapping society. Um, I wanna start with my usual big picture graph, and it shows the end of year on paper balance. Um, I have this graph showing the last 12 years just to give you context so you can get a feel for that. I'm going to talk about it at length right now. Um, let's focus right on the 2018-2019 highlighted area for a moment. I want to explain there's a big peak there. Uh, it was an initial spike in 2018 and it was a bit of an anomaly. Um, in 2018 we released the Atlas of Design Volume 4 which had truly impressive sales. Um, that year, we also collected money for pre-sales in order to reprint volumes one, two, and three of Atlas of Design. These volumes had all sold out in prior years. In 2019, we saw the expected drop in this graph when we actually paid to have those volumes reprinted and paid to ship them out. So the next slide is gonna 
just go in depth a little bit on this because I think it's really important for us to note. Um, so when we published this, this graph, just to give you context, is um, since year 2012 when we published the first volume. Looking to the right side of the graph, we can easily see the upper four 2018 bars representing high revenue for NASIS that year from all four volumes. In 2019, the bars represent a net loss in Atlas of Design because we had planned for this and knew it was coming, but it was to pay for those reprint and shipping of those volumes one, two, and three. It, we crossed over into the next calendar year. That's why it shows it as such. I'm sorry, did I get off on my, you were on that with me, right? Somebody's gonna speak up if I get out of line here. I'm getting trigger happy. Okay, so, um, so that at least in part is explaining what happened in those fluctuations in 2018 and 2019 in terms of our end of year on paper balance. There's lots of other financial aspects to all this, but uh, that, that helps I understand what's going on those years, I believe. So this slide shows the most significant expenditures our organization has funded through the past decade, listed at the bottom by color. In addition to that coral colored line, yeah, it looks coral on your screen, good, um, that deals with the Atlas of Design, which I've already addressed, I'd like to take a moment to focus on that gold yellow line, it's on the right side in the last few years, it represents conference video streaming expenses. First introduced in 2016 for PCD only, we expanded to video stream PCD and all main conference sessions beginning in 2017 at a cost of about $20,000 per year. And it's been fabulous. I think everyone agrees. Um, <laughs> The board based this decision on membership survey results because we had sampled in 2016 for PCD only. And we felt it was an extremely beneficial use of the NASIS funds. To date, NASIS has managed to provide conference video streaming with no reliable funding source earmarked to pay for it. I'm your treasurer and that always has made me very uneasy. <laughs> um, so how the heck have we managed to cover this expense so far? Okay. <laughs> now, uh, no, I don't want to imply that Susan Peschel has funded this whole thing and she won the lottery. No, 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 no. But um, with her savvy conference organizational skills, our NASIS business manager, Susan Peschel, has assisted this in super inspired and dedicated NASIS volunteers who work such long hours to put on superior annual conferences for the members. And the results has been, sorry, I lost my place. Uh, <laughs> the membership and conference attendance has grown through the years because of this. Um, putting on a conference is a financial balancing act with attendance central to either losing money and you could potentially lose a lot of money, breaking even, or coming out a little ahead financially. The goal when planning a NASIS conference has always been simply to not lose money. The result has been a generally small but consistent flow from conference net, net income through the years. And this is showing the gap that that conference net income has plugged for us through these years. And it gives uh, the NASIS the financial security to invest in innovative initiatives such as these listed here to benefit our members and achieve our goals as an organization. So the end of year um, balance here, going back to that initial slide, let's highlight 19, 2019 and 2020 area. The case that I just presented to you kind of uh, changed dramatically, let's say, during the pandemic. And the NASIS board under President Mamata Akala, our, our leader for the last two years, or a year and a half it seems, uh, managed a quick pivot in 2020 from an all in-person with video streaming conference to put on an entirely virtual 
NASA's 2020 conference. And that was no small feat watching from behind the scenes, I can tell you. Given the emotional and for many, the financial burden for, of months under lockdown with the pandemic, the NASA's board had voted to, to charge no conference registration fees for our members last year for that virtual conference. We were in a financially secure state to do this. And it was the right thing to do at the time for our members. Many of us had conversations in Rima last year about the NASA support and positive social interaction that had otherwise been so lacking during months of lockdown and working remotely. We knew as a board that we would likely lose quite a bit. And this graph is showing you that we certainly did on the year. But we also deemed it was worth it. However, in 2021, here we are. And we determined that we can't give it away again for a second year in a row. And so this year became our experimental hybrid NASIS 2021, which you're all part of. So we want to see if this is going to be a sustainable model for our future. And the board really is looking forward to hearing from you, our members, whether you're here in Oklahoma or on Slack, to help us continue to provide the best conference experience we can in these changing times. Finally, I look forward to giving you a financial update next year about how this all turned out. It's all an experiment. And I will be delivering my final treasurer's report in 2022. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Molly, Vanessa, Mary Beth, and Leo for uh, going through important NASIS business. Um, so I just wanna kind of start talking about the board, introduce you to this board that's helped uh, put this year's conference on and our future board. Um, so, if you are in this picture and in the room, please stand up. And if everybody could help me give a round of applause for the NASIS board that is here in person. <laughs> Just like Mary Beth said about our uh, 2020 virtual conference, 2021 hybrid has been no different in terms of um, planning execution. So thank you all so much for everything. <laughs> and there's also, also some of us that are not, some of the board members that are not here, um, but they have been working extra hard behind the scenes on Slack and uh, making sure that everything is working seamlessly for the virtual experience. So even though they are not here with us, if you could please give them a hand as well. Okay, and so we have the board, but as many of you know, we also have other initiatives. This is an all volunteer organization. So um, there are a lot of people that contribute to what is uh, NASIS as a whole. So we have a team, Atlas of Design. If you are here, please stand up so you could get a round of applause. Uh, cartographic Perspectives, um, another fearless leader, Amy Griffin, who is CP editor, and there is a editorial board. If you are on the editorial board in here, please stand up so we can also thank you. And uh, Similar to what I was saying about earlier about communications and outreach, uh, we're not able to always do it all, so we really rely on um, amazing volunteers like Bill, our Slack coordinator, who is here, and please stand up, Bill. <laughs> who did an amazing job both last year and this year really organizing uh, Slack for the conference. So it wouldn't have been the same without you. Thank you, Bill. 
and Alex, who is not here in person, but all those NASIS tweets coming out, he's behind the scenes on that. So thank you, Alex. Okay, and as with every year, we have <laughs> board members cycling off. So first, without getting too emotional, I want uh, everybody to give a round of applause to uh, our, our past president as of now, uh, Leo Dillon. Leo, if you could just stand up. Uh, Leo has obviously been on the four-year presidential track and for all of for those of us who have been through it or are currently going through it um, it's a lot and Leo I just want to say thank you so much for always being there for me um, somebody I could talk to somebody who just checks in with me randomly to see how things are going I've appreciated it a lot and also that you do that for everybody else on the board and we all really love you a lot, and we will miss you, but we know you're not really, really going to be going anywhere because we won't let you. <laughs> we also have some uh, board members at large uh, um, cycling off. Molly, who you heard from. Uh, Tim Wallace, who is joining us virtually, and Wen Fei, our uh, student board member at large. Um, so a big round of applause to them. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you have done. And I want to just give a special thanks to Molly. <laughs> You've been really, really uh, great for this organization and your energy and your willingness to always step up and do anything, everything and chair three committees and always be uh, getting people together to be excited no matter what you have going on. And it's meant a lot to all of us. So thank you so much for everything that you've done. Okay, so we have some newly elected board members, and I'd like to introduce them. Uh, so, well, first I'm going to start with Kate, who is a current board member. Kate, can you please stand up? Also, one of she is has she uh, runs the NASIS newsletter. She's uh, coordinated all of the virtual social events for the past two years, and is has also just been um, a cheerleader for all of us throughout everything. And Kate, I am so happy that you're coming back, and thank you for uh, even. If, she said, even if I'm not, I will still do the NASIS news. That's how um, dedicated she has been to this organization, so thank you. Our incoming VP elect is Brooke Marston. Brooke, I know you are here, if you could stand up. And our uh, new board members, Hannah and Vicki. And I know Vicki is online, but uh, many of you know her because uh, she's graciously been the new attendee ambassador for virtual attendees, so um, she's there. And LaToya Gray is our new st student board member, and she is also joining us virtually, so a big warm NASIS welcome to all of you. Okay, so NASIS, I tell people that you, if you do the presidential track, that there's also a position called past president, which I don't think is very <laughs> typical. So you, it ends up like four years, you know, and um, so as of right now, I'm gonna be past president and uh, Pat's moving on to president and Travis moving on to vice president. So Pat and Travis, please stand up. Meet our new president and vice president. And 
And here's our new incoming board. I, I, I realize that I just like people to clap a lot and <laughs> uh, give cheers and all that kind of stuff. But um, here is our um, incoming board. And there are, are yeah, that's it, period. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and so just want to put out there that board nominations are uh, currently open. If you go to nasis.org slash nominations, um, please nominate yourself, anybody else that you know. Um, and yeah, that just got put up today so or last night. So please, please go in there and start nominating people. And if you have any questions, oh, I did want to mention, Leo's going to be doing a presentation on Friday at 4 p.m. about uh, volunteering with the NASIS board. So uh, if you're interested, please find one of us board members, uh, join his talk. Um, yeah, we're all here to give you the information that we can. And with that, I am uh, passing the gavel to Pat, your new NASIS president. Um, Pat's been a pleasure to work with. He got an extra special crazy year to plan um, with a hybrid version of the conference and has approached everything um, with a smile and a good attitude. And he's really made it uh, easy for all of us to, to help organize this yet again insane year of conference. So, Pat. <laughs> So I should just keep this picture of myself up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did last year when Leo did this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Mamatha. Thank you for the nice introduction and being for such an, such an inspirational leader. As we've heard, Mamatha really blazed new pathways last year by organizing the first online conference and uh, in the midst of a pandemic, right, when this was all new to us. And um, she has been an expert guide and a mentor to me in, um, in organizing this year's conference. <laughs> Excuse me. So therefore, um, as my first official act as president, I would like to declare today Mamata Akela Day in recognition of her many achievements. <laughs> and I would especially encourage our re remote attendees to please go outside and wish everyone a happy Mamatha Akela Day. <laughs> So when I joined the presidential track two years ago, not many of you may remember this, but um, we already had a lot of participants using masks. Um, these masks, however, were almost exclusively used in order to limit our map extents. <laughs> Wait for laughter. <laughs> Since that time, we've found a lot of more and different uses for, for masks, as well as changed so many other ways that we do things since that time. Um, what's remained surprisingly consistent during that time, however, is the contribution that I hope to make as president of NASIS. And um, I contribute this, this staying the same as my understanding of what our society is all about. I, th I think of NASIS as a welcoming community of map enthusiasts. In many ways, this statement is so fundamental to NASIS that it seems beyond question. But sometimes pandemics or other changes in the way that we, uh, in, the, in our perspective or our ideas, cause us to ask interesting questions, just like we've had to ask so many interesting questions this year. And some of those have to do with even about how we can strengthen our sturdiest bedrock on which we're built, like that statement. Although we as an organization have already put great effort into um, addressing the following questions that I'll be asking, as we can see by everything that we've accomplished, 
I would ask you to join me in the coming year to consider these questions both from your own perspective, but also from the perspective of others. So welcoming, how can we assure, ensure that NASIS is welcoming to every individual? Community, where do we gather our community and how do we gather our community? How do we create and strengthen bonds among members of our community? And enthusiasts, how do we express our enthusiasm for MAPS? Seeing a lot of that at the conference. And uh, how do we express this both to our membership and to mem members of the general public? And also with enthusiasm, how do we kindle the enthusiasm for MAPS that we see sparking around the globe? As president, I look forward to working with our guests, our members, and our board to continue to address these questions in a meaningful manner. In doing so, I help to ensure that NASIS remains resilient, relevant, and dynamic. And at this point, I think we're going to uh, open things up to announcements, or is that right? Yep, okay, so um, if anyone has any announcements, they're welcome to come up and, uh, and make announcements at this time. Um, this is a little bit of a rehash of announcements that were made yesterday at uh, PCD on behalf of Atlas of Design. Uh, I will p be posting the, the, uh, the URL and the uh, email address that I'm uh, going to be mentioning on Slack as soon as I get back to my seat. Um, first thing is Atlas of Design uh, is continuing to sell well. In fact, we're about to run out of our reprint of uh, Volume 1. Um, and uh, the other volumes are selling well, as, as, as you saw. We encourage you to buy more. There are a number of discounts available, uh, which I described yesterday. There's always a member discount of 25%. Uh, we have a special for this, um, uh, for this meeting. And uh, we also, for people who are attending, uh, you can pick up copies of Volume 5 for free, uh, for free shipping. <laughs> um, one of the things I took away from the, the Treasurer's report um, is why we are looking for a, uh, a new position, which is a, a paid uh, a coordinator. We don't have official title uh, yet, but a coordinator for fulfillment and, uh, um, and distribution issues. We want someone who can take care of the ordering system, the online ordering system, our relations with our fulfillment company that does the shipping, uh, can potentially coordinate printing and delivery of, of printing if we d want to go back and reprint other, vo other volumes, which is certainly a possibility we've talked about before. There are just other long-term logistical that, uh, issues that having a new team every two years has made it uh, hard to deal with, uh, to keep consistency going. So we're looking for someone who, uh, it's not a hugely paid position, but that it does offer some remuneration. If you're interested, please contact the uh, Atlas of Design uh, team at, uh, um, at atlas at nasis.org. And the last is that we are opening up for volume six. We started production on volume six and the uh, 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 asking for submissions um, uh, is up as of now. Uh, again, uh, at the atlas, uh, atlasofdesign.org, uh, we'll get, get you a link to that portal. For you, the, uh, the members and the people online, um, Obviously, submit your own work. Tell us about or encourage people you know who do really cool maps to submit. And also spread the word. We're not a publicity machine. We do the best we can to get the word out. But you know people. You're scattered all over the world. You know people who know people. Get the word out or get the word back to us if, you, if there are particular publicity uh, outlets that you want us to promote to. We do the best we can, but we need your help uh, to get the word out to as wide and diverse uh, geographically, economically, um, subject matter, material you make the map of. We're looking for as much of a variety of map designs that work well. And you can define that however you like. That's the, sort of the point of the Atlas. Thank you for all your support for uh, Atlas of Design. Uh, the only reason we can do it is because we have such a great uh, organization backing us up uh, that makes it possible to do this in a variety of ways. Thank you all.
Let me start with a uh, trivial request. Uh, if uh, we need to, we think we need to borrow an HDMI to HDMI cable for tomorrow night's Jeopardy. So if you've got one in your laptop bag, you'll be here tomorrow night. Talk to me. The second is uh, less trivial, I hope, um, and that is a plea to keep the community going through the year by using the Slack channel, keeping that open. So those of us who work by ourselves uh, really miss the sense of community with our fellow cartographers around the world that we get once a year at NASIS. And by keeping the Slack channel pinned in our browser, uh, you know, we see a badge come up maybe once a day, a couple times a week, and uh, can kind of keep that going. So I kept it open all year, didn't have a whole lot of traffic, but occasionally a job posting, and I think we can do a lot better than that. Bill, does that sound okay? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Brooke Marston. I was an editor on the Volume 5 Atlas of Design team, and now I'm following in Travis's footsteps as VP-elect of NASIS. I'm also a cartographer at um, the Department of State in the Office of the Geographer and Global Issues, and we are looking to hire another talented cartographer to join our team. Um, it's a very fast-paced but collaborative job that uses intelligence and um, all source analysis to inform U.S. foreign policy. So you get to work on a global portfolio and make maps for um, meetings at the UN, for our diplomats, and um, for senior administration officials, including the Secretary of State, um, the Vice President, and the President. I have a map in the map gallery that should give you an example of some of the work that we do. I also posted an article that was written about our office. It has a couple examples of some of the unclassified maps that our office has produced over, over the years. So please take a look at that if you might be interested. The job should be posted to USA Jobs next week, hopefully. Um, if you follow me on Twitter at Mapping Marston, I will also tweet it when it's posted, and we'll post it in the Slack channel for the community jobs. If you have any questions, please just DM me on Twitter or find me here in person, or Leo Dillon as well. He can tell you a lot about the job and what it entails. So thank you very much. Hi, when the uh, Corliss Benefideo Award was first established some years ago, um, the first winners of that award were a couple, Helen and Newton Harrison. Um, and uh, I wasn't there at that meeting, so I'm not really all that familiar with their work, but we got a, uh, a message from a group in California that's doing a symposium about the Harrison's work. And they asked me, as uh, I'm not sure why, I, I, I got the email, let's put it that way, if um, <laughs> there was any interest from anyone in NASIS to give a talk about the importance of cartography and, 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 world of, and basically in the world and in the worldview of the, of the Harrison's work. Um, so it's, it's going to take place, I think, sometime in spring of next year in, I think, La Jolla, California. Um, I don't have tons of details available for you, but that's something you might be interested in doing. I know they'd really appreciate it, and it would be a good opportunity to get the word out to NASIS to a, to a community that probably doesn't hear that much about it from, from otherwise. So if anyone's interested and wants more details, please let me know, and um, I will forward them to you. Thank you. Yes, hello. My name's Mark Daniel. I'm one of the things that I do. I'm the reviews editor for Cartographic Perspectives, and I'm here to give my annual pitch for people who want to uh, get free books about mapping and cartography, and all you have to do is to write a review. Now, some certainly at the start of the, uh, of the pandemic, there were lots of people that dove into all kinds of hobby type things like making sourdough bread, and some people decided to take on book reviews and sort of no longer answer my emails, and I'd rather not have to uh, uh, deal with more people like that. But still, this is a good opportunity for you to be able to uh, get into print and uh, help everybody else in your, uh, in your community by letting us know whether these uh, books are worthwhile obtaining, whether they're worthwhile looking into, or whatever. So I've got a big shelf of them on my, uh, on my, uh, in my uh, bookshelf at home, and I'd like to give these away, ship these off to, uh, to people that can, that can tell us about them. They could also be absorbed into my uh, collection if uh, nobody really wants them, but I've got, I think, 700 or 
850, I think, atlases and map books about maps right now, and so I really don't need any more. But you, uh, you can get those. Now we've got, I, you write the review, and, and you, get a, you get three months to do that. You send it to me, I, I help you with your writing. We've got a great uh, copy editor in the form of, uh, of Daniel Huffman, who also uh, pitches in with that. So there's lots of uh, support for people that, especially that if you've not been doing a lot of writing or not been doing a lot of writing recently, and even if you're really good at it, we're still going to give you help, helpful and unwanted advice. But uh, anyways, it's a, it's a really good opportunity and you should go to the CP Books for, for Review page and see what's there. There's also a list of them on the registration table with some pictures on it that I just grabbed off the website. So, and if you see one of those there, and you can talk to me like at the conference too, and we can, we can go on from there. So anyways, that's a, that's a resource that's always available to you as well. So, so uh, check that, and uh, thank you very much. All right, thank you everyone. And if there are no further announcements, I think we can adjourn the business meeting. Can I do that too? Yeah, okay. All right, two things already. All right, thank you everyone.